Hi everyone, this is Lisa Haven and I've got a very interesting report to share with you today. In fact, I've been doing a little bit of research into uh, globalist and elite wineries and what I found is absolutely astonishing. Uh, but I'm titling this New World Order Rothschilds blood tainted wine uh, and the name of it is called opus one wine also robert mandavi is with that as well so these are the two wineries that are globalist wineries and they're shrouded in a lot of illuminati um, and freemasonry imagery which i'm going to show you in a moment but it's absolutely rattling to the core. Uh, not something I would drink, but nonetheless, it is 265 a bottle for the Opus One wine. But let's delve into some of the details because I believe you're going to find this very fascinating. All right, so here is the website, the Opus Winery, and you can just see uh, the elegance here of this particular website. Now, what I wanna show you is in this lower left-hand corner on the screen, and also right here now, is their logo, and this has a lot of significance. So what is that logo? Well, it is the god Janus. Um, here's a quick report I found on crystallinks.com about Janus. He's a double-headed, uh, god, but in ancient Roman religion and mythology, Janus is the god of the beginnings and of transition, thence also of gates, doors, doorways, endings, and time. He is usually two faced god since he looks into both the future and the past. The Romans dedicated the month of January to, I guess, this particular god. Janus was frequently used to symbolize change and transition, such as the progression of the past to the future, one condition to another, one vision to another, one universe to another, which that, if you are a Christian and into the spiritual aspect, that holds a lot of value, I believe. But hence, Janus was worshipped, he was a worshipped god, obviously a false god, at the beginning of the harvest and planting times, ergo the reason they put it with the winery, as well as marriages, births, and other beginnings. He was representative of the middle ground between barbarity and civilization, rural country and urban cities and youth and adulthood. So you can definitely see the significance there. But this is the very uh, character of Opus One right there. Now, just a forewarning, uh, a friend of mine went to the, or attempted to go to the website and was and not able to. So I don't know if uh, they're restricting certain things or not. So hopefully you can get to it and I'll leave a link below. But here's just some of the winery itself. Uh, and let me just show you, I wanna show you their history here because I think this is what I wanna focus on about Opus One. It says, of the great European wine families, the Rothschilds, <laughs> meaning the Rothschilds, we know they're highly Illuminati, globalists, they're on, they're on the top of the pyramid there, but are perhaps best known. They're the creators, the founders of this wine, them and uh, their co-founder, Robert Mandavi. Uh, and Baron Felipe de Rothschild is perhaps the best known of this great family. At age, great, he's not great in my opinion. At the age of 20, Baron Felipe took on the management of Chateau Mouton Rothschild from his father, Baron Henry. Felipe's vision changed the world of wine. He invented Chateau Bottling, commissioned great artists to illustrate his wine labels, and in partnership with Robert Mandavi in 1979, created Opus One. In the 1980s, after her father's death, Baroness Felipe de Rothschild left a stage career that included comedy franchise and theater company, bringing her own exquisite style and creativity to the design, construction, and operation of Opus One. So you've got, you know, obviously the Rothschilds are the founding on this, along with Robert Mandavi creating this one wine. And they only create one wine. Uh, it gets into a little more, but here is just the history here. 
It gets into uh, Chateau Rothschild winemaker Lucien Simone, or, or however you say that, and Robert Mondavi's son Timothy made the partnership first vintage at the Robert Mondavi Winery in 1979. The following year, the partners officially announced their joint ventures. In 1981, a single case of wine sold for $24,000 in the first Napa Valley wine auction. Whew. Simply, I believe, because of the name. But it kind of gets into it and talks about how um, it was priced for $50 a bottle and gets into a little more. But you can see the people who are involved in the making of this wine. And uh, let me just show you also the price. Now, one other thing about this, and here it is, Opus One 2012, $265 for one bottle, or you can buy a six pack uh, of it for $1,590, as you can see there. Very, very uh, pricey wine. Uh, now, tasting reservations, they're very picky about who goes there. Uh, and please notice this um, you must have a reservation in order to go. And I believe it's 45 bucks just to taste the wine. Uh, so we see guests by appointment only, appointment only reservations. But here's some of the images I wanna show you as well. They do have a photo tour on here. Um, you notice the elegance. Now, if you actually look an aerial view, uh, let me show you the aerial view. Actually, I, I can't show it to you because it's copyrighted, but um, I'll leave a link on that below. But it looks like the Freemason compass. It's got a circle on top and then it has the, the um, you know, compass shape. So that is one thing. Definitely Illuminati here. You can see in some of these pictures, you can see the round thing and the compass projects out this way. Uh, you can somewhat see it here, but... Uh, very elegant, very fancy in the inside, lots of Illuminati symbolism. In fact, on this website, when I was looking through it, it's on 169 acres, exactly, kind of creepy if you are familiar with numbers. You also have to store the wine at 63 degrees. Uh, much Illuminati symbolism in this thing when you think of you know, the number three, the number 33, these are all associated with Freemasonry. So lots of symbolism at this winery. Now, one last thing I wanna show you is the sister company here, the Robert Mondavi Winery. We know Robert Mondavi was very linked in to the Illuminati family, uh, the Rothschilds. So also another thing to check out is his website, and I will leave a link or the website there to Robert Mondavi, but both of these are linked with globalist Illuminati members. Now, one last bit of information that you may or may not have heard about this winery is that there is a rumor involved. I guess it's it's more of a rumor. It's not a fact that I could verify, but I wanted to share it with you as a rumor, but they're, they're very much known for their dry and heavy blood red wine, Opus One is, and so it is believed that they taint their wine with blood. At least that is a rumor. I can't prove that one way or another, but it is an interesting rumor. Um, another thing that shrouds uh, the Opus Winery in, mis in um, mystery and secrecy is when they built it and they constructed it, it was all done uh, behind closed doors, so to speak. It was a very, not your typical winery where they have a big ordeal about it, invite people from all over. It wasn't like that. It was very shrouded in, shrouded in mystery. So it makes people believe that it's another Bohemian Grove type location where Illuminati members come and, and they can come certain hours. And I don't put it past it for a moment. I do believe they definitely, especially that it's owned by a Rothschild and Robert Mondavi, they're definitely holding things there. Uh, probably satanic ceremonies. Uh, also reports from the inside have come in that there's a lot of Freemasons similarly. We know there is a tree of life, uh, uh, not not of God, you know, obviously, but uh, this is an Illuminati symbolism as well uh, that's inside the building. But very interesting things there, but it is definitely believed to be a hideaway similar to that of Bohemian Grove. Anyhow, you may or may not have heard about this winery before. And so if you haven't, 
it's uh, brought to your attention now. Anyhow, don't forget to check out my channel and subscribe. And if you haven't tried the tea products by now, I highly encourage you to get one and try it at getthetea.com. He's got lots of great stuff there. I personally, and I'll show you, um, use the tea, Life Change Tea. I use the Supercharged Tea. Very powerful stuff. Very, It works, and I actually take it on a daily basis now, and it's just have to be great. Uh, also, if you're not stored with food, please check out foodforliberty.com backslash haven and get prepared. And here's the thing, the elite and globalists and Illuminati are preparing for something. And if they're preparing, they know something's coming, we need to get prepared. Anyhow, wanted to bring you the latest. This is Lisa Haven signing off.